A couple of months ago, we uploaded a video when we built Flying Wing EDF plane. Our plan for that was to make a portable, reliable and easy plane to use. The problem with that was it wasn't reliable, was too fast and was not easy to use. So the wings are basically done, they are not completely identical, we had a bit of a problem when we were cutting, but uh, I think they are approved anyways. We are planning to uh, place this, a bit of this uh, carbon fiber spar that we used in the Bluebird project to give it a more stable build. So on the wings have this carbon fiber made a couple of grooves that fits the carbon fiber perfectly just like that and they will the rest of the wings will be placed like this fits very strong I gave it a bit of uh, dihedral to make it a bit more stable we'll also place uh, glass fiber over here which uh, connects to the carbon fiber and extra support over the whole wing so we almost finished the wing uh, and sanded down the glass fiber spar in the middle. I stretched it from tip to tip. Well, not in the middle, of course, but yeah, the whole wing. We also have a layer of back I showed you before. The whole wing came out to 69 grams. We haven't made the ailerons, of course, but uh, maybe 110 grams, 120 grams for the complete wing, which is uh, totally acceptable for our standards. It is uh, extremely strong, very overdone with this uh, carbon fiber and two layers of the glass fiber. So the fuse rush then, I have prepared these templates that I will place on each side of a big foam block cut out a cylindrical shape, shape, sand it down, and then we have the fuse rush. On the tip of the fuse rush, on the front, we will also 3D print a little camera mount. And foam block here for the outcutting of the fuse rush. And that's basically the next step to cut the fuse rush. So basically, the fuse rush have been uh, outcutted. We are just trimming off some extra parts because uh, either way we will need to uh, grind them off. Fuselage is almost done. Here's the first top part and that's, here's the other under part or vice versa. We have now installed the servos. The servo leads in the wings. We act I accidentally put them on the un underside. It's supposed to be on the upside. As you saw, I have cut out these stabilizers. They are meant to be put on the plane's top, like this, and also on the bottom here. They are meant to uh, not only give stabilization in the air, but also protect the propeller because it will, uh, it stands, it's like higher than the propeller, propeller, so when it lands, the propeller won't touch the ground, the stabilizer will do it, and this is made out of glass fiber, so it will protect the propeller. In here with all this stuff to figure out how we're going to do the electronics. We will do some soldering, some thinking, and hope for the best. We got this uh, PPM encoder, which hopefully will allow us to use this Express LRS jumper uh, something uh, receiver uh, instead of the regular RC receiver. We also used uh, these uh, lithium ions from, from my old laptop. We'll hopefully 
be able to use a three cell above 3000 mAh battery. Here we have a mock-up of the wiring and uh, let's see how we implemented it. So we have soldered the motor to the EC of course and then we have extended the cables with an XT60 as well. And then from the EC we have the servo wire and the power distributes to the servos uh, and the signal and power goes to the PPM converter which also uh, has the signal wires from the servos. This uh, converts to a uh, Express OS receiver, which we are planning to use. Basically, we just realized this is a PPM encoder and uh, we can't use it to convert the uh, uh, PPM signal directly to normal analog RC, so uh, we have decided to go with a normal RC receiver. Anyways, <laughs> ah, it sucks, but anyways, let's do it. As we previously stated, we are going to use lithium ion batteries. This, these are taken from an old laptop, so they are quite uh, beaten up and quite spiky. <laughs> we are going to solder them together uh, to make a 3S uh, lithium ion pack. I think they are like uh, 3000 milliamps each, so uh, that would be quite nice for playing. So the battery is finished. Well, we just attached these stabilizers and uh, this cone thing has been made. It's not uh, put on permanently right now, just to see how it looks. Uh, we will do a little hole for the camera. Earlier I said that we were going to use a 3D printed part, but decided to go with a foam part because of the weight. Yeah, so it's almost done. Uh, I think we will finish it tomorrow and then uh, go out flying in the weekend. So we are looking forward to that. It's time for the official last part of the plane. And after this, it's ready to fly. We are attaching this servo here, horn here. And uh, I think it's attached right now. Ta -da. Now it's finished. Well, uh, yeah, see you on the field. So we're out on this uh, quite windy and wet January day in Sweden uh, to fly the Bruce, we call it. It's uh, inspired by the flying plank, the Nano Goblin, that uh, Think Flight design. Well, we made a couple of modifications on it. So let's see. Well, it's time to fly now, so... Ja, det är jag. Touchy som en helvete, antar jag. Vad fan var det där? Okej. Tror jag. Tror du det? Okej. Fan rå. Det var inte alls bra. Vad hände? Ingenting. Det är en trimmat sätt. Men jag kör. On our way back from the unsuccessful flying, we are thinking about what the problem was, how we can fix it. Believing it could be the motor that's twisting the plane too fast or it's just too heavy. Don't really exactly know, but that's some of our guesses. But to get a better feel of the plane, uh, we are planning to do something a bit crazy, but quite cool. Dropping the plane from uh, another plane because that will give us a, mo a, uh, a lot more time to get the feel of it and uh, save it from crashing so that's our plan for now